Hello, Carl here with Sustainability Theory News. We're over at EcoFarmingDaily.com. They have an article, Managing Parasites in Livestock. So worms and other parasites can be a bang for the existence of many ranchers and even homesteaders, of course. So here are some tips to help that. Biodiverse pastures. You want to have plants that have what are called plant secondary metabolites, which are natural enemies of parasites, if you will. Tannins, which are common in many different plants, including chicory, bird's foot, tree foil, plantain, willow, burdock, curly duck. A lot of these are just wild weeds that grow in many different types of soils. I also believe that uh, acorns from oak trees have a lot of tannins in them. That will help keep the parasite pressure down naturally by giving them foods that parasites hate, but, you know, animals like cattle and sheep will still eat. Now, livestock species diversification. You want to have maybe different sheep and different goats and cattle. You want to have many different species on the same pasture. That, you know, some species and indeed many different varieties within the species are going to be more susceptible to parasites than others. So by having a large diversity, you have a less likelihood of a parasite just destroying your entire flock or herd. Encouraging decomposers, like earthworms, if you use a lot of wormers or medicines used to get rid of parasites, they can leave the soil less hospitable to earthworms and dung beetles that will help decompose organic matter, making the soil and the field safer for your livestock. They also talk about how wormers are becoming obsolete because they're being used too often. They're underdosing the animals, so they're not killing all the parasites, so they just come back in a vengeance. Sometimes it might kill the parasites, but not kill all the eggs. Treating effective animals and then moving them to clean pastures. You kind of want to keep them isolated for a moment. Uh, number four, treating all animals in the flock or herd, which brings us to the monitoring section. They talk about how 20 to 30 percent of the animals are going to carry 70 to 80 percent of the worms. So in order to find out which animals are, you know, infected, you can, of course, monitor their fecal matter, do a fecal egg count. But they talk about how that's only going to tell you what happened three weeks ago. What you want to really do, or what they recommend rather, is check the anemic levels. How anemic are the animals? Using this FAMACHA card or something similar, you look at the inside of the eyelid and you see what color the inside of the eyelid is. I believe with the check mark A1, this is what you want, a nice deep red color, and the more pale it is, the more anemic they are, meaning the more likely they are to have worms or other parasites in their digestive system. Now they talk about remedies. A few of these I am familiar with, many I am not, but basically the natural ones first, apple cider vinegar or hydrogen peroxide, both organically accept acceptable, and you mix it with the drinking water. Vinegar, it's about, what do they say, two to four ounces per hundred gallons of water. All right, apple cider vinegar, they talk about as prevention about one ounce per hundred gallons of water, but if it's a treatment, it's two to four ounces per hundred gallons of water. With hydrogen peroxide, it's about eight ounces per thousand gallons of drinking water, but they're talking about 35% food grade hydrogen peroxide. Another one I'm familiar with is diatomaceous earth. They do not say it's organically acceptable. However, I've seen diatomaceous earth being sold at like Tractor Supply, and it says it's OMRI listed, O-M-R-I, which tells me that it is organically acceptable, but you may want to do your own research, of course. A lot of these other ones are different mineral or salt lick based compounds or maybe you mix it in with the feed. They also talk about having some free range options so you're going to have this as a free option meaning the plants can come up and use the salt lick or the diatomaceous earth but they also talk about force feeding some of it as well to make sure the animals get a good dosage. Dynamin uh, also consists, consists of colloidal clay minerals. So you have colloidal clays, you have old salts from uh, ancient seabeds mined out of the earth, you have sea kelps as well to help get the mineral content up for the animals. That way they have the basic building blocks they need to have a strong immune system. Now I am going to link to this article in the description so you can read more about it. There's a lot of information in here. And if you'd like to see more news headlines like this, subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.